Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gramophone channel and specifically to another episode of Audio U, where we teach you everything you need to know about audio, whether it be the terminology, the concepts, you name it. And today that topic is going to be about headphone drivers, because there's a lot of different ways to make a headphone. Now what I'm going to describe is not necessarily true of every case, but it's a good rule of thumb. So before I break down the two most popular variants in the headphone world, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because a lot of great content is on the way, whether it be in the form of highlights or more educational content like this. All right, so let's take a closer look. So on the table today, I have two great representatives from two of my favorite headphone companies, but both are very different. This is by Focal the Clear MG. This is a pair of all disease, specifically the LCD3. Everything made by Focal in the world of headphones is a dynamic driver headphone. Everything made by Audizy is a planar magnetic headphone. First, I'm gonna talk about dynamic, a little bit about how it works and generally what I find them to be like as far as actually listening to them. With dynamic drivers, this is what we generally consider the more traditional driver. These are just a really high performance single driver. A cone on the outside, a little bit more of a dome on the inside and that's how we're reproducing low, to high frequencies and doing it well in one unit. And headphones, this works out pretty well because we don't have to make a very high SPL or just loudness. Obviously, when you put a pair of headphones on your head, you don't want them hitting with the same amount of energy that a speaker would because you could kiss your eardrums goodbye. Now, with dynamic headphones, there's different ways to make a dynamic driver, different materials to make it from. Focal is famous for using a couple different materials. Their aluminum magnesium blend, their pure magnesium driver, but you probably have also seen our video on the Stelia and the Utopia, where they take it to 11 out of 10 and use beryllium, the best material yet used in any dynamic design because of its stiffness to weight ratio. On that note, why stiff? Why lightweight? Simple. You want a driver to move like a piston, as in to have no flex or any bend, because that's how you get distortion. Distortion equals bad music. Stiffness equals good music. Lightweight equals speed, dynamics, clarity. So that is pretty much a breakdown of how a dynamic driver works. But now let's talk about planar magnetic driver. Planar is, while a little bit more complicated, it's not too bad. Let me put it to you like this. We're gonna make a sandwich. Here's one piece of bread, here's another. Except the bread are magnets. And then in the middle here, in the little space between my hands, we're gonna put the meat. The meat is a very, very thin membrane-like material. And then we're gonna take that meat and we're gonna put a little copper or aluminum trace in it, something that can conduct electricity. That's now the same coil that makes the cone and dome in a dynamic driver move, except it's in a thin sheet. You put a current through that, it's gonna react to the magnets, it's gonna move, and that's how we're gonna make sound. Planar is known really for its size, its dynamics, and I'd say its speed. And what that gives us in real life is just detail. Say you listen to a song that has a lot going on at once. You know, guitar slamming, drums pounding, piano being played, all this stuff. What if you could hear each and every single note of each and all those instruments with good separation? Planar's fast enough to do that. Now then, it's not to say that a dynamic headphone can't be fast or that it can't be detailed. It certainly can. But I will say, I've noticed that in the world of Planar, you get into that level of speed at a lower price point before you do it dynamic. And really, that's the nuts and bolts of how both of them work. But of course, what you're wondering by now is, well, how do they feel? What's the actual experience like of one versus the other? I find dynamic headphones to generally have a greater sense of weight or presence, especially in the mid-bass area and when you're starting to move into straight-up mids where the bulk of the human voice is going to live. Highs on dynamic headphones also just tend to be a little bit, well, weightier. Meteor, and you'll find that I'm using terms like that to describe it because quite literally it is the heavier material. Now, Luke, didn't you just talk about how lightweight and speed is good? Yes, that is true, but there's still something to be said about the feeling of what you're hearing being substantial. Planar is going to be a little bit different. Because of the size of that driver and the amount of air that it can move, there's a term that goes around sometimes you may have heard by now called planar slam, as in these can really deliver in the bass region, like they just sound thick. Now, I praise what I think is generally a good mid-range in the world of dynamic headphones. Is that not true in planar? Not necessarily. Planar has kind of come back a little bit, though, in my book, in the highs. 
and especially in certain models. Because of how lightweight this material is, because of how fast it is, it can render treble detail very, very, very well and give you a great sense of air. And with that sense of air comes a sense of space. Planars tend to have a really, really awesome sound stage and sense of imaging, the way you feel like things are moving around. Basically where we're going here is if you're more of a mid-range flavor guy, maybe you look more at dynamic. If you're looking at something, it's kind of the more whole package. But if you like airy details, a certain slam to the base, and a certain level of imaging, maybe you look more planar. I hope this serves as a good guide and a good starting off point for those of you who are looking to get into this world of higher end headphones. However, the best thing that you can do is to come experience these for yourself. So please stop by one of our showroom locations in Timonium, Columbia, or Gaithersburg, Maryland. We have many different makes and models on display and you can demo them all to your heart's content. And for those of you who are shopping online, click the link down below to go to skybygramophone.com as we have a wide variety available. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you had a good time. If you have any additional questions, be sure to ask them down below. Don't forget, we also have that ask at gramophone.com. That's a direct line to me. So if you got some specific technical questions, I'd love to help you out with that too. As always, thank you again for watching. Be seeing you.